Hello pumpkins, it's Bella and today's video is going to be hopefully the start of a new series. Um, if you guys like it, if you enjoy it, of course I want to make it a series but only if you want to see the series. So definitely do give this video a thumbs up if you want to see it. Comment down below any suggestions for future videos. Um, but basically this series is going to be about unsolved murders, unsolved mysteries, unsolved missing people because I am so incredibly curious about that kind of thing. I think it is just so intriguing. I love to like think about what happened and like make my own theories and kind of like gather all the evidence myself. Uh, I just love to do that kind of thing. I actually went to uni for criminology and psychology because that's how interested I am in this sort of thing. I did want to become a um, homicide detective or an abnormal psychologist because as I said so incredibly interested and curious in this topic. Today's video is going to be about John Benet Ramsey. She was a six-year-old girl who unfortunately was murdered in 1996 December 26th or 25th. We don't know if it was the 25th or the 26th. I don't think we know which one of those it is. So John Bonet was a six-year-old pageant girl and she died December 1996, 21 years ago, which is insane that nobody has been caught for this. So John Bonet in her family, it includes her mother Patsy, her brother Burke, who was nine at the time of her death, and John Bennett, which is actually where she got her name from. That's her father. So John Bennett is like his first and middle name and they put it together and made John Bonet. So her actual cause of death was asphyxiation by strangulation and I cannot pronounce this word. It is craniocerebral trauma. I tried to look up how it's pronounced and I just really could not get it. I hope I don't I don't think I pronounced that right but that was the official cause of death. They believed that she was hit in the head, um, blunt force trauma to the head and then she was also strangled by a garret. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into a little bit more evidence, a timeline, tell you guys what happened, and then at the end, we're gonna go into like theories, what I think happened, what you guys think happened, and start off on December 25th, um, the night of Christmas, the Ramsey family went out for a dinner or a Christmas party at their friend's house, and they arrived home at about 10 p.m. from what I can find, um, and John Bonet fell asleep in the car, so they just basically picked her up and put her to bed but that's pretty much the last thing that we know we have no idea what happened between that and the next morning which was at 5 5 52 a.m there was a 911 call from patsy ramsey 911 emergency <laughs> She was frantic. She was basically freaking out. Of course, she was saying that her daughter had been kidnapped and any mother would be frantic and hysterical if they thought that their daughter had been kidnapped. She was on the phone to Kimberly Archuleta, who was the 911 operator. And the weird thing about this call is that at the end of it, there's the, the last six seconds of the call is like inaudible, but they got it enhanced and you can clearly tell that there's an immediate change in the way Patsy was speaking so clearly it she probably thought that she hung up that's what police think I actually watched a CBS documentary about the murder of John Bonet and they had the 
video, the recording of the 911 call enhanced. They also had a um, interview with Kimberly Archuleta to see her thoughts on it and she was the one on the call and she definitely said there was an immediate drop in Patsy's like demeanor her, the way she was talking as soon as she thought she was off that phone call so Archuleta thought that once the phone call ended um that Patsy said okay we've called the police what do we do now and then there was also enhanced footage, hence enhanced recording of the end six seconds of the call. And in this end six seconds, they thought that they heard three different voices, which would have been Patsy Ramsey, John Bennett Ramsey, and Burke. So this would be really crazy and really, really damning evidence actually against Burke. Well, not that damning, but the Ramseys had said that Burke was asleep at this time. They said he was asleep the whole time. So if they did hear his voice, that's really strange that they would lie about the fact that he was asleep. And apparently, from what they enhanced, they heard um, what they think was Burke say, what did you find? Which is a really weird for him to be saying. So on this call, she mentioned she found a ransom note in her home, which is why she thought that her daughter had been kidnapped. So at 5.59 a.m., three minutes after the phone call had ended, um, the Boulder police showed up at the Ramsey house. The Ramsey also invited their friends and family, which is really weird. I feel like the Boulder police did a really bad job in this um, case, and I feel like a lot of the way that they handled it is why no one has been caught for this murder because a lot of the evidence and a lot of the crime scene was a lot of the evidence was actually contaminated and I feel like a lot of the fault lies on the Boulder police for the evidence being contaminated especially the fact that they let so many of their friends and family come into the house come into the crime scene I mean to be fair they did think that it was a kidnapping so they were looking outside of the house at the time but it was still a crime scene and they definitely should not have let so many people in. What they did when they got there was they looked over the ransom note. So there was a ransom note that was left in the house. It was two and a half pages long. This ransom note was really weird. Um, so many things about it don't make sense and a lot of people think that Patsy actually wrote it. So this was left on the stairs and it was two and a half pages long, which is a long ransom note. On the documentary from CBS that I watched, they actually timed four different people writing it and it took no less than 20 minutes. And on top of that, they already knew what they were writing, so this would have taken even longer for the person writing the ransom note because they didn't know what they were writing. And, you know, they were kind of like making it up as they go. They also had a practice test of this ransom note. They got to the house, decided, oh, let's write a ransom note, even though the body is still in the house. They wrote a two and a half page one. They practiced it. They used Patsy's notebook and her pen. And then they put the notebook and the pen back where they found it, back where the Ramseys normally keep it, which is so strange. Like the ransom note is such a strange piece of evidence. It's a really like important piece of evidence, but at the same time, it's a really frustrating piece of evidence because it, it kind of seems like it was put there to like make it look like a kidnapping. So this ransom note asked for $118,000 and the weird thing about this very specific amount of money is that it was suspiciously close, uh, almost exactly the bonus that John Bennett got that year from his work. So it kind of seems like it was someone in the family or someone very close to the family that knew how much of a bonus he was getting because otherwise why would they ask specifically for $118,000 like that's such a specific amount of money they also ignored the instructions on the ransom note which said not to call the police which I don't know I mean I guess I can see how some people would react in that way but personally I would not go to the police if I found a ransom note I would definitely do exactly what the ransom note said to get my daughter back I wouldn't call the police straight away so that was really strange but also the ransom note had some really weird sorry some really weird um, lines in it. So it started off by introducing themselves as a small group that represents a foreign faction, which is a really interesting thing to start off a ransom note with because they're kind of like belittling themselves. And I think as a kidnapper, you would want to assert power and confidence rather than kind of be like, yeah, we're just a small group. You would definitely want to seem dominant and like you have control and power, but 
I don't know. And the other weird thing about that was the foreign bit. So they've spelt some really complicated words correctly, but then they've spelt other words like business incorrectly. They spelled a few words incorrectly on it. And it kind of seems um, from what handwriting forensics or like the professionals at analyzing notes um, actually said that it seems like they tried to make themselves seem like their native language was not English, like they did it on purpose. It also seems like they tried to change their handwriting. So at first they were really trying to change their handwriting so nobody could determine, to determine who it was, but then later on they kind of got sloppy. So the handwriting kind of changes throughout. There were also a few lines in the ransom note that were actually from popular movies and the Ramses had a lot of memorabilia in in their house so um, um, a professional also determined that this note would have been written by a woman because there was a lot of maternalistic language throughout it which is why a lot of people think that it was written by Patsy so they did have both John and Patsy give um, samples of their own handwriting to compare it to the ransom note and John was completely ruled out but Patsy was not it was not ruled out it was not ruled in it was undetermined um but there was a lot of similarities between the way she writes and the way the ransom note was written which is why they thought that it was her and also it was really strange to have written a ransom note when the body was literally in the house like i feel personally if i was gonna well i would never kill someone but in that situation you would think that maybe the family would have a look around their house or I don't know. I just think it's really strange to have a ransom note written or to write a ransom note when you leave the body in the house and on top of that that you would spend so much time writing a ransom note like not scared that someone's gonna wake up to go maybe to the bathroom come to the kitchen get a drink of water and not see like they spent so much time doing it it's just the ransom note is a really strange piece of evidence. So moving on, the police actually suggested that John and his friend go and search around the house, have a last search around the house to see if they can find anything. And this is when the body is found. So John goes and looks in the basement, which is where he finds John Bonet's body. When he found her body, she had a garret tied around her neck. She had duct tape on her mouth and also her hands were tied behind her back. And the weird thing about the, the um, hands tied around her back, like the back of her head, was that it was actually tied like over her jumper. So it was to the point where she could have easily had gotten out of it if she were alive when it happened. That's really strange and that's another reason another reason why people think that it was a cover up. So he basically picked her body up, it was in a blanket, and then he put her on the lounge room floor which is a huge contamination of evidence because so many people were there walking through the lounge room and he picked her up and moved her from the crime scene. So it was a massive contamination of evidence, um, which is, I feel like it was really detrimental to the case. And not to mention later on, um, one of the people in there actually put a blanket over her, which was another massive contamination of the crime scene. It was just handled really badly from the start, the case. So when they examined her body, there was actually so much DNA evidence that it was kind of overwhelming. So they found traces of two males and one female under her fingernails um, but it was too small and too badly degraded to determine if it was blood skin or tissue they also found DNA from a male on her leggings and in her underwear so on the duct tape they also found fiber from Patsy's jumper so there was a lot of DNA evidence a lot of that kind of stuff but there was so much that it was unable to be determined because none of the DNA evidence that was found was actually a match to anyone in the family or anyone on their suspect list. They had like 160 people that they matched it to and it didn't match any of them. Um, they also said that possibly the one on her leggings could have been like from the factory for instance, like somebody making it and the Ramses just didn't wash the clothes before John Bonet wore them. They also think that the three different DNA samples that were found on her jumper were could have been from one person but it was so hard to determine that basically DNA doesn't help anything in this case. So another really strange thing about this was after they found the body the 
Ramses quickly stopped cooperating with the police. They didn't do any police interviews. They basically refused, but they did do a TV interview. So they didn't tell their lawyer about this, who they hired two hours after the body was discovered, by the way. Um, and they didn't tell the Boulder police about this. They didn't do an interview with the Boulder police for a very long time, actually, after the murder had occurred. I think it was like three weeks or something, which is a very long time. And that's basically all of the information. I don't think it's all of it. I've definitely missed some of it. There is so much information in this case. But now that I've given you guys most of the evidence, I'm going to go ahead and get into theories about what people think happened to her. I'll get the first one out of the way because it's kind of a really stupid theory and I don't believe it at all. But there is one theory that John Bonet is actually Katy Perry because they kind of look similar, but it doesn't make sense. And I definitely don't think it's true. I'm pretty sure Katy Perry is like six years older than her, so it just makes no sense. They say that John Bonet wanted to become famous, so she kind of like reinvented herself or something. I don't know. It just, it seems, it's a really stupid theory and I don't think that it's true uh, but I just thought it was worth mentioning so there was also a few theories about different people um, like that weren't in the family who may have committed this so there was one guy his name was Michael Helgoth and they really thought that this guy was guilty because they had a um, he actually admitted it to one of his co-workers on a recording. So they had this tape recording of him admitting that he actually killed John Bonet. Um, but he killed himself two months after um, they found John Bonet's body. He killed himself two months after the murder. Um, and some people think that he didn't actually kill himself, that he was killed because there was an accomplice, like he had an accomplice when he killed John Bonet, and they didn't want Michael to speak, so they actually killed him. There's there's like a bunch of people that they thought, they had like so many suspects. There was another guy, and this guy was named John Mark Carr, and he admitted to um, murdering John Bonet, but it was in proven that it was impossible that he killed her because they actually have photographic evidence that he he was in Georgia at the time of her death so it just made no sense he was probably just obsessed with the case and then decided to come forward and try to admit guilt but he definitely wasn't it was literally impossible that he killed her so another theory is the intruder theory that somebody outside with family and friends actually killed John Bonet and I guess this comes about because John Bonet was a pageant girl they go and they dress provocatively they have lots of makeup on she was only six years old and she wore lots of makeup had her hair done dressing provocatively singing provocative songs and shows so I mean I guess it's kind of like a playground for pedophiles like it's horrible so some people think that maybe they saw her there they liked her decided to stalk her and eventually came in and killed her or it could have just been someone random someone that just decided I don't, I don't know really but um, a lot of things prove this theory wrong for instance uh, the basement where she was found there was a hole in the window like a smash in one of the windows in the basement which everyone knew about John um, Bennett actually knew about it but he thought they lived in a safe neighborhood so he didn't bother like patching it up or anything but the thing about this is they couldn't have gotten in there because there was a cobweb uh, in the bottom corner of the window so for them to get in they definitely would have disturbed the cobweb and they didn't it was still completely intact which is really strain. That's a really big piece of evidence for me that personally makes me think that it was an intruder. Another thing is there was no signs of forced entry at all. Also, when it comes to this, I personally think it's really weird to come and murder someone without any of your own weapons and then to write a ransom note without bringing without thinking of it previously like if you murdered someone you will want to get the hell out of there rather than staying deciding to go up find a notebook find a pen write it put it back down like practice it write it put the pen back put the notebook back and then sneak out again like it's really strange it doesn't really make sense to me at all okay so this is another theory is that um actually Burke her brother did it so one massive piece of evidence for this theory is that there was this pineapple bowl which was left in the kitchen with some iced tea and um, this pineapple still this bowl still had pineapple in it it also had Burke's DNA on it and it had Patsy's DNA on it but it didn't have um, John Bonet's DNA on it so John Bonet actually had undigested pineapple in her stomach when they did her autopsy so there is a theory that she went up and decided to steal some of Burke's 
pineapple she just like put her fingers in and grabbed the pineapple which is why her DNA isn't on it and then Bert got really mad about this and hit her on the head with a flashlight because they believed that the blunt force trauma to her head was actually caused by a flashlight that they found but no one in the Ramsey claims that it's theirs no one outside of the family claims that it's theirs so it's just like this random flashlight that um, he apparently hit her with in the head and uh, the weird thing is, a year before her death, Burke had actually hit her with a golf club when he got mad at her and left a scar on her face. He did act out quite a lot. He hit her with the golf bat, so it is plausible that he found this, like it was just the thing that he found and decided to hit her with, like it was easy to grasp, he just hit her on the head and then she actually died from that because some people believe that mm, so there's two theories within this theory and one is that she died from the blunt force trauma to the head and then they staged the rest of it with the asphyxiation. The second theory is that she did not die, she got knocked out from the head trauma and then um, the parents actually tried to, like they thought that she was dead so the parents tried to cover it up and they strangled her with the garret which they had to make believable so they actually had to do it and that actually killed her so they thought she was dead when she wasn't and so they actually killed her without even knowing so that's the two theories but let me get back to the first one before I get off topic they believe that he hit her on the head and then the parents didn't want to lose both of the children so they decided to stage the whole thing make it look like a kidnapping with the ransom note tying her hands up even though she could have gotten them out of it put a duct tape on her mouth and um, the Garrett strangulation to make it look like a strangulation um, instead. And another really weird thing about this is she had two kind of dots on the back of her neck, I believe was the back of her neck. I'm really sorry if that's incorrect. Um, but she had these two dots and some people believe that it was a taser, but when they actually inspected this and tried to make the marks with the taser, there was like the two little circular marks could not be made it was just kind of like irritation to the skin but the marks actually matched up perfectly with um burke ramsey's little train set he had a train which matched up perfectly with these dots and was found near the body so that's why a lot of people think that burke did it another piece of evidence against him is the dr phil interview that he did and honestly like i would not hold this one against him. So he recently did his first ever interview and he did it for Dr. Phil and he was smiling throughout the whole thing and a lot of people were like oh why would you smile like he's laughing about the fact that he did it and he's smiling because he doesn't care because he knows that he did it and he's gotten away with it. Personally I don't see it like that. I see it as like he's laughing or like smiling because he's really uncomfortable. I do it as well like if I get in trouble I always start laughing. I start smiling instead of like you know looking sorry even though I am sorry so I personally don't think that that is a piece of evidence against him the fact that he was smiling he could have just felt really uncomfortable it was his first interview um ever about it so yeah I and I definitely think that he was just feeling more uncomfortable than anything so yeah that is everything for the case let me know in the comments down below like what your theory is what you guys think happened or any evidence that I may have missed in this video because I probably did off the top of my head um, but yeah if you guys are interested in more of this series please let me know and let me know what you would like to see next give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hopefully I will see you guys in my next video bye